Oh, hey guys. So you may be wondering what in the world am I doing? Well, for those of you that may know, that's an old martial arts concept of silk reeling in the lower body. Remember, I'm making a figure eight with my hips. What if I told you that was probably the most underrated and probably one of the most valuable ways to build up hip mobility, glute, gluteal strength and stability, fix a lot of the lower kinetic chain issues in your body, as well as build core stability. Now, why would that be? Well, a lot of times when people try to fixate and work on hip mobility, they don't understand that our hips actually move in all points of motion, oftentimes at once. So by actually doing a more functional position, being upright on my feet, I'm actually teaching the hips how to use all their abilities because my hips can extend, my hips can flex, they can abduct, they can adduct, they can rotate in and out, external and internal rotation. But oftentimes they're not doing just one of those actions in everyday life. So if I can use an action like silk reeling, I can actually teach my body to work more efficiently and effectively, address the issues that often are correlated to hip mobility like we discussed in the blog, and build movement faster while also building strength, stability, and balance. So there's so many benefits to this drill. I want to break down how we go about teaching it because I've just taught this to in several conferences to fitness pros, clinicians, strength coaches, and be amazed how difficult it is for most people to understand. It's actually not that complicated. Plus, I get the connect chain uh, action of my foot, my ankle, my knee, all that tibial rotation stuff that people are worried about. I get my thighs, I get my hips, my glutes, my core, my pelvis, all active at once, and they have to work synergistically to create the movement. So what is this movement? So typically, I like to take a, a position where I go my feet together, I'm gonna go heels out, that's one step, toes out, that's two, heels out, three, toes, four, heels out, five, about there, and I'm gonna turn my feet out. We're gonna talk about, you can always modify this position. If you need to go wider, obviously you can, but if you need to go more narrow, you can as well. What I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna pull my hips out of the joint, and my knees are gonna track in the same position as my toes, a little bit at that 45. Now I don't need to go super deep right off the bat. I just want to sort of relax in the position. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift weight. And as I do so, I'm going to feel a rotation in my pelvis that comes from me pushing through this leg and through this foot. So I want to be at a little bit of a 45. So what's turning my trunk is my pelvis and my hips, not my low back. So here. Because if I turn my low back, I'm losing power generation in the movement as well as efficient, efficiency and mobility in the exercise. So I'm going to start here. So from here, I'm going to push through this leg. It's going to shift me back. At the same time, I'm going to start to rotate. So this hip is going to close and this hip is going to open. Shift back, close. This is going to start to open. But both feet are active the entire time like so. That, that you can start to see why it's such an amazing hip mobility exercise because mobility is depending upon connective tissue, muscle, ligaments, tendons, your nervous system. So again, if I have issues in my foot, my ankle, my core stability and things like that, I'm also going to see reductions in hip mobility. So I get to work everything at once. Now, a lot of people have a hard time controlling their trunk when they're doing this movement. So something we can do just to give a little feedback to the upper body is create a little bit of a plank as we're learning the exercise so that we make sure we are understanding to move through the hips and not through the spine. So I'm gonna take a modest ultimate sandbag. I don't need a lot of load here. This is about 30 pounds for me, but you can definitely start with 15, 20 pounds. It's totally fine. I'm gonna go in the position. So now I'm gonna be able to tell very easily, plus I'm getting some feedback of how to keep my trunk stable so we create a little tension against the usb as i create the movement now how much tension i want to create i want to be able to easily breathe so i take a deep breath in through my nose and then exhale through my nose inhale and exhale Inhale, and exhale. So that would be a great way to start people. And you can work up to doing five minutes of that and your hips will definitely feel something. I don't recommend that right off the start. Recommend maybe going 30 seconds to a minute 
on such a drill just to build up some tolerance of those hips because it can make you quite sore if you've never done it before. But grounding both feet is super important and working those positions are super important. So where we can take that now is we can get a little bit more reflexive with our upper body and our core stability, meaning like I don't want to be tight all the time. I want to be able to be relaxed and move more efficiently as well. So we're going to take our mobility balls here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold them down by the top of my pelvis here, palms up. So I'm going to get in that position now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a deep breath in. And as I shift, I'm going to exhale as I sort of push one out just a little bit from my body. I don't want to reach. I just want to be pushing out. So I'm sinking into my feet. I'm going to breathe in and push out the other side. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in. So I'm shifting and rotating and breathe out. Breathe in and out. So that's another way to take this to another level. Eventually what I want to do is notice what we're doing is a lift action and a little bit of a chop action. So those of you who are familiar with uh, diagonal patterning and PMF know that's really great for building core stability, which connects my shoulder, core and hip in a lot of the exercise. So that's a good foundational way of teaching it. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go one ball here and I'm going to add a little bit more movement. So I'm going to have kind of a lift. I'm going to have kind of a plank. So imagine doing like our lateral bag drags. I'm going to have to resist rotation through my trunk as I come around. I'm going to have the chop and then I'm going to resist rotation in a little simple way. If I'm going to get more into that lift. So I'm creating circles in my body. So my elbow is not going to really extend at all. It's going to stay in this kind of cupped level. I'm going to place my hand on my hip. The ball is going to start about belly button height. So I'm going to start with the same thing we did. We did that little push. Then when I reach that range of motion that, that kind of maxes me out, I'm going to turn my pinky so the ball is facing away from me. I'm going to shift across so it's about chest height, a little higher to the other side. I'm going to turn the pinky again and pull the weight as I shift my weight. So I'm shifting my hips into the movement. So now I'm using core stability to help my hip mobility. I'm getting my core active from both my feet and my uh, trunk, my core up here. So both of them are from this action here are helping that core stability. That's gonna give me more distal mobility. So I'm gonna get more mobility through the lower body. And you see, I kind of naturally sink a little bit more into it as well. So as I come around, if I start here again, it would be inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. So this becomes really efficient too, because now I don't have just a hip mobility exercise. I have a shoulder mobility and stability exercise too. Because the connection in that kinetic chain, I'm actually training both at the same time. So if you have someone with a history of rotator cuff issues or, you know, just have shoulder issues in general, this is a great drill to start applying because now I'm accomplishing both at once while also learning how to generate force from the ground up, which will help me learn other patterns like rotation. So these type of movements are so beneficial and get overlooked because we still have kind of a bodybuilding approach. We think hip mobility is only about me trying to move my hip and the more difficult or painful it is, it's gotta be more beneficial. But research shows when we reach those levels where we're grimacing and we're really uncomfortable, we tend to tighten up more, not gain more mobility. So if we can do movements that are almost meditative in nature while we're building some strength, we're building stability, we're building actually some conditioning when you go this for longer durations, you can actually see greater benefits in the long run. So this is a way to take kind of old time practices, put them in a new concept that allow us to benefit in a myriad of different ways. So again, just understand the concepts first. You can start very easily with the body weight, just learning how to again, shift back and forth. You can use the ultimate sandbag in the front load position and then move into the mobility ball drills 
that you guys will see over time have so many progressions to them and make training tons of fun. Now, if you can't go really wide and you have some of the issues, you can definitely shorten up the stance. You'll be higher up and I can still do the movement. So I can still learn everything we've been doing. So this is incredibly scalable to any fitness level just by adjusting the stance and adjusting how deep I am in the position. So check out our MIM programs, our myofascial integrated movement programs. You can see our mobility balls are coming this week. So Tuesday, be aware, they're a great tool to add into our DVRT system and just greatly expand what you can do in a very, very low cost way. So again, don't be afraid to do different things, especially when you think about what are we actually teaching? Because it makes so much sense. We're missing out if we're not open to these ideas.